Do you like to draw or paint, but also like science? Well, for scientific illustrators, the two are a lot more connected than you might imagine. Hello, my name is Stephanie, and I'm a scientific illustrator for the Dinosaur Institute at the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County. To discover the world of the dinosaurs, science and art have to be connected. Paleontologists study animals that have long been extinct, so they need help from artists like Stephanie, who are able to bring dinosaurs and other ancient animals back to life. Scientific illustration, even this age of you know, beautiful photography and you know, the ease of digital photography, is still really important because scientific illustrators take all this information and can remove the noise. They can distill it down into you know, the important parts or what's interesting or what you're specifically trying to talk about. And sometimes it's something very complicated that can't be shown by any other means, and art is a way to to communicate sometimes really complicated ideas. Scientific illustrators take what people have never seen and reimagine it in the form of drawings that help us to better understand how the world used to be. But artists like Stephanie don't only use their skills in an art studio. They also use them in the field. In this case, the field is a dinosaur dig site. When we're excavating a new dinosaur, my role as a scientific illustrator in the quarry is to dig like everybody else, but I also um, uh, document all of the bones photographically and with a drawing. So we set up a grid that we can um, set up again each year in the exact same way, and we use like a, a mapping square that has this divided in a certain way, and, and you put it down on the ground, and you draw exactly what you see, and you document every single bone before it comes out, you create a map that you add to each year, and then as the bones are prepped in the lab, I add even more to it because we're always finding new things in the jackets that we collected in the field that we didn't even know that we had. Mapping is an important part of the fossil digging process that keeps the scientists organized and gives us an insight into the ancient environment. In the end, you have a, a document, this map, that can show us how the animals died together, what elements are associated with other elements, and you can, there's a lot of scientific information that they can be had from that kind of a record. After the dino digging team comes back to the museum, they have a lot of bones and need the help of a skilled artist to discover what the dinosaurs might have looked like. The first part of my job after a new dinosaur discovery is usually to create a technical illustration that will be in a scientific paper that's used um, to describe the animal and the illustration will show what parts exist and is often accompanied by photographs and the illustrations can clarify you know what the pieces are and then sometimes I'll then take those pieces and create a, an illustration showing them reconstructed as um, a skeleton would be articulated in life and so you have now something that looks more like an animal, looks more like a dinosaur, it's a skeleton. So if dinosaurs haven't been alive for millions and millions of years, how do artists know what they look like? Observing modern animals and making comparisons is very important to the process of scientific illustrations. Though dinosaurs might be different from animals we see today, they had a lot of similar traits to modern animals, and we can make a lot of scientific comparisons between dead and living animals. One very interesting way to look at proportions and to learn about proportions in nature and animals is to compare sort of similar animals. You have a bunch of birds, you have a bunch of like theropod dinosaurs, and you can notice that proportionately some of them have much bigger heads or much smaller arms in relation to each other, and it's very, very interesting and informative. Try thinking like a scientific illustrator by observing nature with the curiosity machine.